Good morning traders, Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Tuesday, November 3rd. Okay, let's get started. Let's find out uh, how we stand heading into Election Day, starting with the SPY 2 hour. We, just to quickly recap, we broke out of a $20 range, came back to back test it, failed, and then broke down and found our way towards uh, the bottom of that box down at 322 where uh, yesterday we uh, found support and bounced up and then basically spent the rest of the day um, wrestling with 330. Now pre-market futures were up uh, pretty nicely. I had uh, IWM up 1.9%, SPY 1.4%, and QQQ up 0.8%. And that's of 6.30 as I start this video. So, as it stands now, SPY is set to open around more or less 3.35. So, I have this 336 as a as a decent level. There's a number of reactions back here. So we're set to open up in this uh, gap from the other day. So of course that's going to mean there's unfilled gap space above and then there's going to be unfilled gap space below till yesterday's close. So this gap will be adjusted after the open today. So really they're either going to flash it higher go up to this 338 level where there would be some overhead resistance or take it down and fill the gap from the morning come back to back test 330 and uh, and then possibly uh, bounce it from there but you know with the election here um Hard to get inside the, the heads of traders. It, it seems like they've gone uh, back into cyclicals and value uh, starting yesterday. Uh, we'll talk about some of that as we get into IWM. But one thing I wanted to... So my point there is... I'm not sure at the end of the day if it's going to be like a risk off because the election's here or they're going to continue to uh, uh, strike an optimistic tone and push this a little higher from the open. What I did want to point out here is on the two hour chart of SPY, you do have some bullish divergence working. Notice here at this low where RSI is, was set. And then we made a lower low on price, but RSI was higher. So that's bullish divergence. Really didn't see it much on uh, PPO, but it's clear as day on the uh, RSI indicator. And then if we look down on the 30-minute uh, chart, you can see here that you can see the bullish divergence. So here we've got a cluster of prices at this low with PPO here and RSI here, both positioned low on a you know on their relative scales. They're at the low end of the range. And then we made a lower low here, but note how uh, momentum was higher and RSI was higher as well. So even though price has chopped along and not really accomplished much over the last several days, underneath the surface, there's some buying pressure. And that's what this these indicators show. So that doesn't mean, you know, it's an automatic buy signal. All it means is there's buying pressure under the surface and if you get a technical break above these levels, that should give you additional confidence to be able to take that position long. Now here we see, I had price 
in the pre-market right here at about 335. So the top of the prior gap was 338. And then of course, there'll be a gap down below to 330. So <clears throat> getting that opening trade right uh, may make all the difference because, uh, you know, for a run $3 higher or three or four dollars lower i mean that's gonna be a big deal but you know just trade it you know if you're not an opening range trader then just let it go and wait till it gets to an objective level to either take it long or short now the cues aren't nearly as uh, bullish as spy is um we've got this well-defined two-hour trend line that's been going since uh, early October. We came down here, settled in at 268, which was a well-defined level that we've had on the board for a long time. And we got a little bounce uh, into the close yesterday. But really the key level to, to get something going is to break above 275. And that level's been tested several times and it's been rejected every time. So I think that's that's where you got to get a, a higher high and then possibly a higher low to start grinding into an uptrend if that's going to materialize uh, in the days and weeks ahead. Now, this 268 area is a nice area to take an objective long because you're at the lows so if this were to sell off this morning you know come back and somehow back test this 268 yet again that's an objective long why because you've got a well-defined level you can go long and then set your stop just below and then look for a push back up to uh uh, 275 where some uh, you know healthy resistance is going to reside and then that becomes your objective short so that that seven eight dollar range there I mean that I mean that's real money if it continues to chop you know from high to low in that range so We'll have to see and then, you know, you can take your positions at the high and the low end of the range. Here in the middle is a tough trade. So be careful trying to, you know, get too cute here in the middle of the range because then you're at the mercy of the bars and you don't have any overhead resistance or support to uh, give you a hand. Here it is on the 30 minute view notice no real uh well i guess here you do have some some positive divergence we've got a low here with ppo here and then another low with ppo slightly higher same thing on rsi but here again the midpoint of the channel is 275 so it has work to do getting up there and then breaking above and then your target above that would be uh, 277 at the top of this uh, downtrend resistance line IWM has been outperforming let's take a look recall when we were looking at SPY and QQQ that on those indexes price had come all the way back to test these September lows, whereas IWM only gave a 50% FIB pullback. And that's characteristic of bull market action. When you have a strong advance and you come back 50% for your half back long, that's, that's bullish price action. So, from that standpoint, IWM has been a lot stronger than, than SPY and QQQ on a relative basis. 
Now in the pre-market, price is all the way up here, testing 159. So there's going to be a, you know, a sizable gap below, but if it can recapture 160, that would be your technical buy. Remember, recapturing a level from below is bullish. If you were to get a push this morning up through 160, I think you can take that long and then look for a gap fill uh, of this open gap up here, 160, 140 to 163. You've got a bull cross working here and you've got RSI trying to break up into the uh, um, above the 50 range. If it goes the other way, it's vulnerable down here to 155.82, which would be the bottom of the gap left from the open. So that would fill the bottom of the gap if they went lower off the open. Uh, here it is on the 30 minute scale. You can see the dramatic bullish divergence here on RSI and PPO where price was chopping around with the RSI and PPO positioned low on their scale. Then we made a lower low, but with RSI and PPO higher showing that there was uh, buying pressure under the surface. So anyhow, set to open somewhere between 158 and 159. So uh, be aware of that. And I did not color it in on this one, but remember there's a gap up here. I showed it on the two hour chart. There's a gap right here at, uh, I think it's 161, uh, 40, something like that. Moving on to uh, Fang names. Uh, real soft here, very, very weak price action. Facebook sold off hard after their earnings, made a lower low yesterday before recapturing that 260. No divergence at all, so no, no buying pressure under the surface. Really, It's got to hold 260 or 255 comes into view. Now, if the if the market, you know, regains its footing in the queues in particular, if you got a little back test of 260 and it held, that can be an objective long looking for 264. And definitely, if if price can take out 264, then you've got a nice long looking for 270 where you know it'll run into more overhead resistance but between 264 and 270 there's not a lot to stop price and I would expect price to find that level if it can get above 264. Apple same kind of story real weak uh, no bullish divergence lower low wrestling with this thin zone down here uh, below 108. So on the downside, 108 really has to hold um, to keep this thing alive. Otherwise, there's not a lot of support down here. On the upside, if you could get a breakout above 110, which has been a level that we've had in there for a while. <clears throat> you get a run up here to, <clears throat> excuse me, 112. And then above 112, you get a potential gap fill all the way to uh, 115. So if there's a sudden resurgence, those are your levels on the upside, 110. 112 and 115 and if things stay soggy you can get short on a break of 108 and then look for lower prices all the way down to 
uh, 102. And you probably want to back out to the daily chart to fine tune those levels down here. But I think 102 is a good uh, is a good target on the downside should 108 break. <clears throat> Tesla got a nice bounce off the low side of the channel and now it's at the high side of the channel. What the bulls really need is a breakout back above 410 then above 420 and 430 to get to really get things going. Otherwise these are places to potentially try and fade. This 410 level would be a very objective short entry, depending on you know what your feeling is on the market and, and, and the way it looks. But held support for a long time here, and then now it's going to be stiff resistance. So if you got a little baby push up here to 409, 410, where it looks like it's stalled, you could initiate a short with a stop just above and then look for a move back down towards uh, uh, 400 or 390 back in the channel. So bulls have some work to do here on Tesla. Same thing to a large degree with Microsoft, pretty weak, uh, back tested the uh, this uh, 200 support level got got a little bounce into the close your first line of resistance is here at 20450 if it can break above that then it can get up to 207 and potentially 209 but i would be leaning i would be leaning towards fading these rallies in uh, in Microsoft and in some of these other tech names they're just real weak and I think I think that's the right posture until price proves us wrong you know if you were short at 20450 and then you got stopped out I mean price has proven it right and then if it goes up here and breaks above and then moves up into the gap then it might be finding its footing and and moving higher but price has to prove it first right so uh, I mean look at Amazon that thing really let go after earnings you know what is that that's a lot was that $275 since earnings that's a big big uh big rug pull this 2975 is a key level it undercut it yesterday and then jumped back above if you were bullish amazon recapturing that level from below right becomes the buy and now you can look towards 3050 as a target but again I think if you got that push, I'd be looking to um, put on a fade at some point, um, you know, either at 3050 or 3100. A 50% back test is about 3100. There's going to be resistance there. And it looks like, you know, unless something really changes, that the bears are in control of Amazon at this time. Uh, Google's held up held up pretty well after its earnings. Here was the earnings bar. Of course they faded it but they only took it back halfway and now they're sitting at this 1610 level. They tried to make a push yesterday brought it back to 1610. I think you can stay long against that level but if 1610 were to break I think there's a really good chance that you backfill this gap here down to uh, uh, what would that have been? That would have been Thursday's close right here at uh, 1555. So to me, 1610 is your 
bull bear pivot. Netflix, here again, price flat, PPO rising, RSI rising. So while price was doing nothing, under the surface, there's been pressure. Um, it's been oscillating in this range between 494 and 480. And just to FYI, I did move this line. I had it at 490. I moved it up to 494 to capture these reaction points. I think it's a better line than, than 490. So if you're at the low end of the range, I think you can be long against 480 and then look for a potential run back up to 494. And if that breaks out, then you can look for a run back up to the gap at 505. But if there is any kind of sell-off below 480, you'll test this low at 475, but then probably come back to 465. I was just taking a buzz through some of the spider ETFs. I was I wanted to look at some of the value cyclical sectors. Oils had a had a tough week, but look at equities. Undercut the low with bullish divergence up top, lower low, higher low. So there's been some buying pressure underneath. Now we've got a major downtrend line from back here. This could simply be a kickback rally to trend where it fails. Or if they break it out here at 3050 or 31, they might have some momentum and certainly above 32. So that might be worth an alarm for you at uh let's just say 3075 for the breakout and then you can decide if you want to wait for like a double confirmation on a break above 32 but let's put that on our radar you know when equities are up and the commodity is down that's usually you know a bullish sign that this group may may have already just had the the washout move so put that on the radar xli tested the september low for three days running and got a nice lift yesterday to recapture the 50. tough spot to to make a buy right here uh, you know, if you're interested in that, why not just wait till after the election and see how it shakes out? Maybe you get a back test to 76 or maybe even get a breakout above 80 and then you'll have some confidence, you know, which way this is going to going to resolve. But definitely you saw a move back into, you know, cyclical industrial value energy names yesterday. And that shows up in. Um, uh, XLI. Also, KRE. We had pointed out this breakout last week. Then it sure looked like a head fake because they sold it off hard. They went from 43 back to 39. Tagged the 50 and, it's, and has since seen a nice bounce. So, if the cyclical trade is back on, I'd much rather see you do something with KRE rather than XLF because this is a much cleaner index than XLF as far as the banks go because XLF has all those insurance companies and Berkshire Hathaway and all that kind of stuff. And also, if there's a blue wave, chances are 
it's going to be the the uh, the large cap bank names that might face some additional regulatory scrutiny. I doubt the regionals are going to going to really feel much heat on that front. So, you know, either way, if the if the cyclical trade is back on, or you like banks, I like KRE a lot better than uh, XLF to be long. Uh, just pulled up this DR Horton. Uh, we went through the home builder section uh, the other day. Undercut this support level at 67.50, but then was up 3% yesterday. This is going to participate in the, you know, in the cyclical trade if that's going to re-ramp. And you've got a nice long entry here on the recapture of 67.50. If you go look at, spin through those names, I'm not going to show them all here, but Lennar, uh, DR Horton, Pulte, Toll, they were all up about 3% yesterday. And some of them are at, at uh, pretty nice entry points. If you wanted to uh, take a stab at a long in housing, uh, because you're at a very objective level here, if it were to fail, you're out right away below 6750. But if that long holds, if that support holds, then you got the potential for a run back up to 80. And that would be a real nice trade. And don't forget, check on earnings for those names. Plug is in the alternative energy space. Nice uptrend line. A lot more sustainable than some of the other names in the sector. Uh, we've got a, you know touches here and here. Touches on the high side here and there. And just this week, price dropped below the channel, found support at the 50, and now is above the channel. I like this one long uh, against this channel or the 50 EMA for a run back to the top at 22. Um, I don't know how much the election is going to affect this one. Um, I assume if Biden wins, a lot of the alternative energy and marijuana stocks are going to go up, but you never know. So you decide if you want to do something with this today or just uh, sit tight till tomorrow and see how it all plays out. But from a technical standpoint, beautiful setup. I really like that one. And then here, we had called out Big C uh, for several days. We were playing on the long side. We did not, or I did not, maybe you did, for a nice trade on a reversal. But now price is all the way back to support at 70. And you can see with this big volume over price bar and the, you know, the, the initial IPO price action here, that 70 is a key level. And I can't tell you which way it's going to go. All I can say is support is support at 70 until it isn't. This is certainly an objective place to say, okay, I'm going to take a long, you know, buying at support. That makes technical sense. But if it breaks, then you're into nothingness land. You'll have one last chance at 65 for a price to save it. But after the first tag, a bounce is expected. After the second tag, there's a much higher degree of probability that that uh, key level fails. Because anybody that bought on this run-up that's still holding they'd be stopped out on a move below uh, 70 and be forced to cover. So I don't want to give up on this name. 
I'm going to keep it on the radar for either, you know, a potential hold here if the market gets strong again or a uh, potential fail where who knows where it may go on the downside. Okay. A um, little bit longer video this morning to uh, catch you guys up. Uh, I was out yesterday. I appreciate your patience with that. Um, I won't go into the gory details, but... Um, if you're following along, I was uh, dark yesterday, and that's uh, quite a rarity for me. Usually I, I do something, but yesterday I didn't. So anyways, thank you for your patience on that. I hope you did well yesterday. So take time to vote today. Make your voice heard. Um, put your game plan together for post-election activities. And what I'm going to be doing is kind of getting all my ducks in a row. If you've been following along, you know that I've basically stepped aside except for intraday, you know, trading ops on short time frames. But as far as swing trading goes, I put the election in the too hard category. You know, just like earnings, too hard, above my pay grade. I have no edge, I have no idea what might happen tomorrow or the balance of the week. Don't forget, we got Jay Powell tomorrow at 2 p.m. So there's a good chance that Powell is talking and we have no idea who won the presidency. So that might be really interesting. And uh, so we got a lot of catalysts. And then Friday, we got the jobs report. So a lot of macro wheels turning uh, with event risk and super high volatility regime still in control with VIX, you know, in the 38s. So I'm going to let some of the dust settle, but I'm going to have some setups ready to go. And I'll, sh I'll certainly uh, share those with you. So if you're new to the channel and you like the content, please hit the subscribe button. I've uh, really appreciated the new people coming on board. I appreciate that. Uh, hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell and you'll get notified of new content. And then in the show notes, links to the blog site and a link to register for all my content. And that way you'll get both uh, an email every time I publish something. And also you get an invite to the trading room and we'd love to have you if you want to uh, participate or just, uh, you know, skim through the posts after hours for ideas. A lot of people do that too. So have a good day of uh, trading. I will touch base with you later today, especially if I see anything of consequence developing. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.